What's up everybody, Anthony Serratelli here, Jersey Filmmaker, ProRes Raw, let's talk about it, it's the thing. So Atomos and Apple teamed up to create a new potential industry standard in ProRes Raw. The easiest way to explain ProRes Raw is that it gives you the performance of ProRes and the flexibility of Raw. ProRes, as you all know, has pretty much become the video industry standard because it packs such a strong punch by maintaining quality but keeping file sizes somewhat small, at least compared to Raw. Raw workflows are so valued because you're not so much working with compressed video files, but more so raw data, which enables you to manipulate your images more to your liking. What Apple and Atomos did was combine those two things so we can work with raw images in smaller bit rates and file sizes. So these ProRes raw files should be easier to store. You can record them to SSD SATA drives that you may already have. So you don't need to go out there and get brand new media for this brand new codec. It's actually very inexpensive and efficient to use. Now let me put this out there right away. I have not even tried ProRes Raw yet. I'm just super interested in it. I went to NAB and I heard Jeremy Young, the CEO of Atomos, speak about it multiple times. I've gone online and watched videos like you're watching this one and have done my due diligence to pretty much just regurgitate to you all the coolest things that I've figured out about this new craze that is ProRes Raw. But moving on, before we get into more technical stuff, let's talk about how you could even get ProRes Raw. So far, the only way to record ProRes Raw is externally through an Atomos Shogun Inferno or Sumo. The reason Atomos didn't put it in some of their older models is because the processing power isn't strong enough, so they're gonna have it in the Inferno and Sumo and I'm sure anything else moving forward. The cameras that output ProRes Raw, Sony, Canon, and Panasonic. From what I know, Panasonic is the EVA 1 and Varicam LT. Sony has the FS5, the FS7, the FS7 Mark II, and the FS700. And Canon has the C300, C300 Mark II, and the C500. And maybe the C200, I'm not sure. I think there's only eight cameras right now that do it, but I'm sure once this thing catches on, any camera that can output a raw signal will have this feature. But they definitely picked very popular cinema cameras, which a lot of people already have. So it's amazing that this brand new codec is available to you right away. Usually when big things like this come out, there's very limited availability to it. You have to go buy very expensive things or very specific pieces of equipment, but this is pretty available. However, the only NLE that you can edit this on is Final Cut Pro 10 or Pro X, whatever you wanna call it. 100% chance that other companies like Adobe will be implementing support for this codec, but for now, April 2018, Final Cut Pro 10 is the only spot. So I know overall that might sound like you need a lot of things. You need a certain cinema camera, you need a certain external recorder, and you need a specific NLE. But they're very available in that prosumer price range, and I'm willing to bet that a lot of people already have all of these things, so I'm sure day one this is released, people were testing it out. First of all, just in case you don't understand, let me explain the difference between ProRes and RAW. ProRes is a compressed video file, a high quality compressed video file, but a compressed video file. So when you hit record on your camera, all those settings are then baked into the image and then wrapped in a codec, in this case called MOV files. When you record RAW, which is also compressed by the way, and I think is a misconception, even if it's compressed very little at like two to one, it's still compressed because if we recorded uncompressed RAW, it'd be like at a crazy, crazy bit rate, which would cost a fortune to store. So RAW, even slightly compressed, though gives you raw data which you're able to manipulate in post. Imagine you had Play-Doh. If you took that Play-Doh and put it in a Ziploc bag and sealed it, you'd still be able to mold it a little bit, but you'd only be able to go so far because the bag would obviously limit you. That's ProRes, or any other video codec for that matter. Now imagine you had that same Play-Doh and you put it in that same Ziploc and you seal it up and you take it home, but now you can open it, take out the Play-Doh, play with it, mold it, rip it apart if you want to, that's ProRes Raw. So it lets you take the raw data, pack it up, bring it home, unwrap it, play with it at less than half the bit rate and file sizes of raw. That's pretty cool. So let's talk some numbers to understand the advantages of this codec. Looking at the bit rates, ProRes Raw is very similar to ProRes 422HQ. And ProRes Raw HQ is very close to ProRes 444. And as you can see, 12-bit uncompressed is more than double any of these other bit rates. As far as compression, as I mentioned earlier, these are all compressed, but how much? ProRes Raw HQ is very similar to Red's R3D files at a compression of 2 to 1 or 3 to 1. ProRes Raw in the 5 to 1 to 6 to 1 range. The benchmarks on Final Cut Pro show that ProRes Raw HQ exports 8.5 times faster than Red R3D files at 3 to 1. 
and then ProRes RAW four and a half times as fast as R3D at five to one. And one of the last and coolest but confusing things that I've learned about ProRes RAW is that it works off of a target quality, not a target bitrate. So it's quite the opposite of how we usually perceive video when you shoot at a higher resolution and a higher quality, you would think the bitrate and the file size is gonna be larger. For example, if you were to be outside with all these colors and light as opposed to being in a very dark room where it's pretty much a black screen, your bit rate's gonna be much higher and the file size is gonna be much higher outside as opposed to inside in the dark. However, somehow with ProRes RAW, the better quality image you're feeding the camera, the lower the bit rate and smaller the file size. I don't know the technicalities of this, but the better image you feed the sensor and the camera, the smaller your file size. Shoot better, smaller files. I'm in. So there you have it, ProRes RAW in a nutshell. I hope this was helpful. Again, I haven't even tested this yet. I'm excited to, I just am starting to learn the inner workings of it so I know how this could help or hurt my workflow and how this is gonna affect the industry. When I do get a chance to play with it, I will of course show you guys what I come up with. But for now, if you like this video, help me out and click that like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. I'd appreciate that. If you have any comments or questions, as always, leave them right below or contact me on any of my social medias, Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook at Jersey Filmmaker. Thanks so much for watching. Remember to get out there. Don't wait. Go create. I'll see you next time.